Hey there. Got some things to pack up, but it's pretty easy to get busy nowadays, especially with um, everyone being involved in some sort of school work, maybe your church, you have all these other things to do. Just like I do myself. This thing never works. at the, the crib here but I wanted to continue on on this topic now I'm currently on that season um, that I just mentioned you know I have things like work school uh, my involvement in church family all the stuff going on and I wanted to kind of share what's been helping me because it doesn't always have to be that way now those seasons for everything but I've been making a better effort to get better about this and not always be making myself so busy so I want to share some tips and tricks from a book called make time that I came across while I've been trying to get better at this and it's really changed a lot and helped me a lot really just get a lot done and be more intentional of what I do. What I love about this book is that it's not trying to necessarily make you more productive, but make you more intentional. So really what the authors Jake Knapp and John Zeratsky are trying to do is help you design your time. Right? I don't want you to get more productive and then all you're doing is making yourself more and more busy because you're just getting things done faster. Um, but choosing how you spend your time and what you're doing with it. So we all get 24 hours a day, so we need to intentionally decide on how we spend it. It's the one thing we don't get back. Now, they said it best, this book's about slowing down the crazy rush and making time for things that matter, which is cool because at the grind, that's what we're about, you know, great coffee and spending time on things that matter. I wanna preface this that perfection is sort of a distraction. Uh, really, we wanna just aim to improve and, and get better at how we spend our time, but we're never gonna be perfect at it. It's just another shiny object that's gonna take away from your real priorities. All right, now getting into make time, it sort of wraps itself around a formula. Now that formula has four parts, and the first one has highlight, which is what we're gonna choose for the day. The second one is laser, so how we're gonna focus in and get that done. The third part's gonna be energized, how we recover, how we have energy to get things done, and the last one's gonna be reflect. So really taking note of how it worked and um, how we can continue improving you know, day by day and look back at it. Now the first part I want to go over is going to be highlight. It's the first part of the whole process for make time. And so remember here, this is going to be how we're setting what's important for the day. And it can really be anything. It can be an assignment you got to do. It can be a test. It can be spending time with your family. It can be, you know, a climb project. It can be going to the gym. And that's whatever we set that's a priority for us to get done for the day. That's what we want to be our highlight. Now, it doesn't mean this is the only thing you're going to do that day, but it means that it's a priority. So you want to try to get it done as well as everything else you're going to have going on that day. Now, there are two things that have really helped me uh, do that and that they go through in the book. The first one is called the burner method. I think this one was made by Jake Knapp. So think of the kitchen. Um, let's say you have two burners, actually, like I do here since I live in a studio. We have a front burner, kind of what's important you're going to be cooking on. You have the back burner, so kind of what can wait a little bit or, or simmer and taking a little bit more time. And then you have the kitchen sink, the things you really aren't touching. And so that's how we want to treat our list. Now we're going to have the front burner be our most important things we're working on. It can be the project, it can be important things we got to batch and get done that day. And now the back burner, things that can wait a little bit, you know, wait a day or two, or you can get to at the end of the day or are not real um, important to, to touch. And then you have the kitchen sink, the things we're, we're really not going to be looking at that can come across our plate that um, we can really put off because we have more important things to do. And so we, I do that kind of two ways. Uh, one of them, I'll do it on a piece of paper. Um, I'll have like a notebook at, at work or even a little sticky note. Um, a lot of times I'll actually do it here on Notion too, since I do use Notion a lot for my daily work and all the projects and things I kind of have going on. Now, the second thing that's helped me that they really talked about in there is utilizing your calendar. So, you know, Google Calendar or even your, your iPhone, whatever you're doing, they all have uh, the free calendars in there that we can all use. It's really helped me a lot by blocking out time in my day to set what I want to do or need to do rather. And so I use it a lot for, of course, things like school, um, when I'm going to be doing something, when I kind of plan on going to the gym, um, of course, using that for meetings with people or hanging out with people. I try to set everything in the calendar because honestly, for me, if I don't put it in there, it's not going to get done. Um, your mileage might vary, but what's cool is that this book has a bunch of different things you can try. It's sort of like a recipe book. You don't have to use in, in, uh, everything in there, but 
find out what works for you. All right, section number two, laser. So this is how we're gonna focus and some tactics we can kind of do to do that. Now, one interesting topic here that they brought up were the introduction of infinity pools. Um, we're all familiar with them, things like email, social media, YouTube's a big one, the news, all these things that just have never ending information for us to consume uh, or things that just keep us entertained. TikTok's a big one. I personally can find myself easily getting sucked into YouTube, so I know I have to kind of check that out. So for me, it really helps to work off my iPad actually, just because I can really only have one app open at a time. It's kind of inefficient to, to use YouTube taking up some screen space on the iPad. So when I need to do something important, writing, things like that, I do like to use my iPad so I don't run into that issue like I can easily on my desktop. Now the second one that I've really, really enjoyed is skip the morning check-in. The unique thing about the morning is you wake up, you feel fresh, it's a new day, nothing has really come across your plate yet to bother you or stress you out yet. Now, I try to savor that by not reaching for my phone or looking at emails, things like that. I like to go ahead and make a cup of coffee if I can um, or you know, food or anything else instead of jumping into work right off the bat just so I can kind of enjoy that quiet morning. Or even better, whenever I'm actually getting up to go to the gym, I'll get up, of course, earlier, you know, 5.30, get there like at 6 or so. Um, I really don't look at my phone at all besides to text a buddy of mine that's supposed to be going to the gym with me. My phone's still on Do Not Disturb while I'm doing that as well. And then I get to work out, I get to get all that done in the morning while no one else is awake, no one's bothered me, I haven't checked emails. And then finally, after I've been awake for a while and enjoyed that, then I'll be getting to the office and then jumping into work there. So try skipping the morning check-in and reaching for all that stuff as soon as you wake up. And it can also be one way you're gonna get sucked into infinity pools right as you wake up. And this is a really great transition into block your kryptonite. So of course, Superman had a weakness, kryptonite. And so all of us have our own kryptonite, things that are really easy for us to reach to and you know let us get sucked away in. Now, one thing that's helped me is actually setting my phone to do not disturb. It's really easy for me to text people or if my phone goes off, look at it while I'm doing work anything like that. So actually, I used to understand religiously and it's been the best thing I've ever done. And not only that, it even helps my sleep too, because my phone goes on to undisturb at a certain time at night, use the automation. And then, you know, I'm not getting bothered with notifications while I'm trying to get ready for bed or go to sleep. It's easy to, you know, something go off, you reach for it. And then there you are another 45 minutes later and you haven't gone to bed yet. But all right, that's all I've got to, that's all I have time for here, because now I need to kind of pack up and then head to the church, edit a video, and get into the next section. All right, so just finished up. So just finished up work. A few ways for us to energize. Now the goal here is really to, to keep us being able to do, um, you know, meaningful work and be able to get what we need to get done, or you know, have energy to spend time with who you want to spend time with. In order to do that, you need to treat your body correctly. And so one of those ways of doing that is, of course, by eating whole food. Now I'm about to go home right now, cook up some food. A lot of times we put junk into our body that doesn't really do good for our energy levels throughout the day. All right, getting ready to cook some dinner here. But I wanna go over some of the next parts of Energize. Now, a couple of the ways that were mentioned in the book and that I personally like to energize is actually through being active. Um, there's plenty of studies that show being active actually helps boost your energy levels. Um, you know, if I'm getting really, really tired at the office, I like to get up, walk around, I'll do some push-ups or something. Um, I make it a point to go work out and I feel the times that I skip all that my energy really starts to drag that week So if you're finding yourself being really fatigued, I would definitely give that a shot. And the next one of course is uh, Caffeine coffee now uh, Being a coffee company, you know, we drink a ton of coffee. I drink a ton of coffee There's always some sort of coffee in these videos um, And in fact, I'm about to make some more coffee now for the evening after my dinner, of course. And I also made a whole video about this whole section of optimizing coffee that was in the book, which will be somewhere up here. I don't remember which side it's on, but you can click on that over there. We're going from coffee uh, into the last part. Just know that there is no amount of coffee that is going to help your rest. And so obviously it's another big part of Energize to really manage your rest. Now, this comes from taking breaks, um, of course, getting the right sleep, um, all these things that to get your, your mind and your body away from working uh, in order to continually allow you to keep working later on down the line. There are times where, again, yes, you will have to push yourself and cross that line to see where it is, but doing that on all the time is not going to be good for you. It's uh, going to be pretty stupid. Anyways, I'm hungry, so let me go ahead and, and get this food going and we're going to talk about the last section. 
All right, so now we're at the final part of this whole video here and this whole process, and it's called reflect. Now think of everything here a little bit like doing the scientific method. So we want to observe what's going on, guess as to why things are happening the way they are, experiment to test your hypothesis, and then measure what you experimented in. So how we're gonna do that is by reflecting. So just taking notes uh, about your process, what you're doing, and being honest about them too. So you can go ahead and make adjustments later on. Now the goal here is to be able to kind of fine tune and figure out what works best for you. Now there's a ton of recipes in this book to go ahead and get you started in a direction and for you to try out. And what's cool is they actually provide a little handy um, template for how they track their stuff as well. And so a couple of things to start is you write down your highlight and then, you, and then you write down, did you make time for it? And then say yes or no. And then you kind of rate, you know, your, your day's focus on a scale of one to 10, maybe on your laser and then energize as well, how you felt energy wise. And then if you want to, and if you're trying out different recipes, you can list out what tactics you tried for the day and kind of note how it went. And then you can also list what you might want to try tomorrow if you're going to be doing something different tomorrow or not. And lastly, what you're grateful for for the day. Now, I like that they included the grateful part here because I do find it's pretty important to you know reflect back and, and see what you're grateful for for the day. It just trains us to look at the, the good in everything and not be so down all the time. Now, I really like how this summed up. Small shifts create big results. Now, I highly encourage you to pick up this book. It's fairly cheap. I don't remember the price. I'll see if I can link it down below. But there are a ton of recipes in here for you to um, get better at making time for what's important in your life and slowing down the modern crazy rush of life, how everything is so busy. So let me know if you try something that I listed here, or also let me know if you end up picking up the book and you find some other recipes that worked out for you, or maybe you've read it before and you have some other uh, ones that have been really successful for you. So let me know in the comments. In the meantime, I am going to start getting ready for bed and start this thing all over again tomorrow. So go ahead and like it, subscribe, and uh, share it if it helped you. See you on the next one.